What is going on, people? The title of this video, Living a Life of Intent and Design. The decisions that you made 10 years ago impact your life today. Let's talk about it. Right now, during the global reset, during the recession, we're in the recession right now, we have many, many people who are living very, very hard lives. They are struggling. People are getting evicted. People are getting laid off. People are catching hell. And there's several categories of people because there's a group of people during the global reset during the recession, during the new world order, that they're gonna be doing just fine. They're gonna be doing incredibly well. You're gonna have people who are gonna become billionaires out of this period of time. And what is the difference between those people who do well and the people who suffer? I'm gonna give you some insight and wisdom on this. The first thing is everyone that I meet that is successful is very intentional about their success. It wasn't like an accident. And this is one of the things you see on the YouTube and the internet all the time that hey, I was just living my life and then I lucked off into this well-paying job. No, it didn't happen. And also I will mention this. The children of affluent parents typically do extremely well because they have resources. They have the resources. They have the ability to do things that the regular folks don't have. So they got that going on. But one of the things that helped me, and let's talk about me, moist men alert, moist men alert alert moist men alert when i was a regular person working the normal job i wasn't intentional at all i would wake up go to work come home watch tv work out hang out with the kids there was no intentionality about my life whatsoever and my life reflected that in the first intentional act, because here's the thing, guys, the decisions that you make 10 years ago is the reason that you live in the life that you're living today. And there's 10 year decisions, there's five year decisions, and there's one year decisions. And I remember when I was in that boarding house and I was being honest with myself and looking at my situation of why I was homeless. And I looked in the mirror and I said, because you didn't have no money. So that week I went out and got a part-time job and I saved all of the money from my part-time job. It was the first intentional act that I did for my long-term future. I worked this job. I did not spend a penny. It all went into savings. And about a year into this, I get laid off from my main job. And I'm like, oh, snap. But I didn't panic because I knew I had a little money set aside. Once again, I had $4,000. I didn't have $10,000. I did not have $20,000. I did not have $30,000. I had $4,000. And during that time that I was laid off between my next job was roughly six weeks. And I spent maybe 1800 of that $4,000. So because I was intentional and I made a decision that did not have immediate benefit, it was delayed gratification because once I got laid off, I was so glad that I did that because I actually had some money. And I started to live 
my life from an intentional standpoint. I start to have written goals and I start to have daily task lists. I'm going to do this today. I'm going to do that today. And I, uh, the more intentional I became with my life, the better my life got. It just, I have been on the upward arc since Renecrate. Each year, my life has gotten better. And I will include 2019, the year that I had the heart attack. I didn't work for seven months, but my business kept providing me money. And later on that year, I had myself a good time. Moist men alert, moist men alert, moist men alert. Let's talk about pussy. Why did Glendon Cameron get so much pussy? It was intent, it was by design. I knew that I liked pussy. So I developed facilities, procedures, and methodologies to get pussy. I was very intentional about getting pussy. This is why at the age of 55, I can date women who are 25 to 35 effortlessly. That is easy for me to do. I can date submissive women, agreeable women, nice women, hot women, pretty women, height and weight proportional women all day long because it was part of a grand design. I was like, I like pussy. There, I said it. And I like young pussy. I do. And I got me some young pussy this morning. It was, it was delicious. It was great. And one of the reasons that I was able to get so much pussy is because I planned on getting pussy. I don't think y'all are rocking with me. I don't think you understand. It was a plan. It just didn't happen. It was a plan. And once again, I've learned things that I've tried to teach other guys, but here's the problem. Living a life of intent and design takes work. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes planning. It takes putting in the work. It takes showing up and it takes doing things like I'm going to tell you something. There was days that I did not feel like posting my Craigslist ads for the Craigslist protocols. It's like, but once again, I learned from my Craigslist marketing system. I had a situation where I just felt like a bum and I didn't post for two weeks and our income went down $12,000 that month. So I could see a direct correlation between consistently posting ads and getting consistent results. And I remember that. So I woke up one morning. I didn't feel like posting ads. But you know what I did? I took my ass to my computer and I started posting those ads. Because living a life of design and intent is not effortless. Living a life of design and intent requires effort. It requires work. It requires showing up. It requires doing the things that you need to do to be successful over and over and over, whether you feel like it or not. See, I took out how I felt. My business partner, Francine, she say, you know, those my do nothing days, lazy bone, do nothing days. And I have the urge to have those lazy do nothing days, but I don't give in. I was like, you know what? We gotta do X, Y, and Z today. And whether we feel like it or not, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z. And I don't know how many times I woke up, not particularly motivated, didn't wanna do the things I had to do, but once I got into my ism and I started to do things, it got easier and at the end of the day, I felt better because I actually took my agenda list, my action list and did it.
moist men alert moist men alert moist men alert all moist men please leave the room let's talk let's talk about money we talk about money quite a bit on this channel i have money there go glendon he's bragging again why do i have money and why don't you have money I used to be just like you. I used to be a regular person working a normal job. Why do I have money and you don't have money? You do not understand how to create value. This is something that every rich person on the planet understands how to create value. This is why I have money. It's quite simple because I create value. And if you wanted to have some money, you would learn how to create value. Once you learn how to create value, your life will change. Now, let's talk about. I don't write specific goals to make a certain amount of money. I've gone. I've grown beyond that. This is how I write my goals. If I want to make a lot of money, my goal will go like this. How can I serve 20,000 people? How can I serve 40,000 people. How can I serve 50,000 people? Because if I go ahead and create value for 10,000 people, 20,000 people, 30,000 people, 40,000 people, I will make a lot of money. There's you create the value and the money is a byproduct of you creating the value. It's just that simple. But once again, People do not want to show up. People do not want to work. And I know I've heard all these arguments. There are people out there who are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. They want to work. No, they don't. Right now, you could be a bum and you could not call and not show up to work. And because it's so hard to get help, they more than likely will not fire you. A lot of people do not have a robust work effort and they're looking to get the most for the least. You cannot go. To, that's cheating life. That's cheating life. You're not going to get what you need living life like that. Let's talk about money. Let's talk about life changing money. To create life changing money, you got to help a lot of people. Notice that I'm not coming at you with the billionaire game and I'm pouring into you and all that other bullshit. It's quite simple. If you want to make millions of dollars, you need to help thousands of people. It's just that simple. What can you do to help people? Because if you help someone, they're going to like, well, here's my money. Like when I was sitting down and I was planning out the Art of Profit podcast, and I'm up to 80 episodes. I have 80 topics written. And by the end of the month, it'll be 100 and something. And I was like, what do these people need to hear? What do they need to hear? And I wrote down the topics and I started producing podcasts. I took action. I talked about the podcast. I got the website. I got the URL. I made the podcast. I watched podcast tutorials. And there's now the Art of Profit podcast. And a lot of people it's like, man, you always do what you say you're going to do. That's another part of living a life of intent and design. Showing up. Showing up. A lot of people will not show up because they give in to that lazy do nothing side. And it's like, well, I don't feel like doing it. Listen to me. You need to take how you feel out of the equation. You need to get out your feelings and you need to get to work. And I get this, well, what kind of work should I do? And that's really a great question. Part of it is the preliminary work is figuring out what you bring to the table and what you can do to help people whether it's organizing closets, whatever your talent is, that's up to you to figure that out. 
That's up to you to do the work to develop yourself. Because everyone's looking for go to point A, go to point B, go to point C, go to point D. Instructions. And life does not work that way. I'm a moist men alert, moist men alert, moist men alert. With all of the moist men, please leave the room. When I was developing the Craigslist protocols, and this is something I talked about in the Disruptive Mail channel, I fucked a few fat chicks. Let me go ahead and speak it plain. They were cute, but they were fat. And this was the beginning stage of my Craigslist protocol. And I learned from that lesson. And I had this one chick she was about 5'2", maybe 175. She was like a little chunky, but she was really, really cute. And one night she was over and I was fucking the shit out of her, right? And then she said something. She said, why am I always the chick that guys want to fuck, but no one wants to date me? And I said, because you're fat. Just like that. I said, if you lose weight, you'd probably be married because you're really fucking cute. And she looked at me and she said, you think so? I said, absolutely. Next day, her ass was in the gym and she had a dietitian. And I kept fucking her. And I noticed every few weeks, she got smaller and smaller and smaller. Then one day she came over in this yellow dress, these sandals with her toes painted pink, and I realized she had lost 35 pounds because the dress was clinging. Her titties had like gotten smaller because she had lost weight and her face got really angular and she was cute as shit. And I learned something. I learned that with the right level of motivation that you could program a chick. So she went from a chunky monkey to a sexy Susan under my tutelage. She was we kept fucking. And I learned that. And I realized during that process, I stopped fucking the fat chicks because I started running better ads and I started getting better results. And I got what was called a sorting pool. Every morning I would wake up and I would look through the responses and I would look at the pictures and I would choose the best of the best of the best, sir. The prettiest women, the finest women, the thinnest women. And it got to the point where there was no more fat chicks coming through my situation because I had worked it out. Now, a lot of guys in the manosphere would not tell you no shit like that, even though right now they fucking a fat chick. They'll come on YouTube, beat their chest. Well, I only date small women, only date. But right now he's going to go home and get his dick sucked by a chubbo. Because see, you don't see their real lives. You see what they want you to see here on YouTube. And then I got to that point after I worked it out because it was a development. Because in the beginning, I was like, I'm just taking what I can get. And I refined the system and I kept writing ads and posting ads. And I figured out the magic secret. It's what I call the female submission story. And when I started writing those ads like that, I started getting the funnest chicks. I've started getting housewives. And I started getting high school girls. Every morning, I would have five to 10 high school girls who would answer my ads. And a lot of them looked like they were in high school. No titties, no ass. I was just not completely, I was completely uninterested in them. And a few slid through the cracks. I remember the 17 year old I was fucking. She didn't live at home. She had a car, she had her own place, she had a job. And she had some double D titties. And I found out like six months after fucking her that she was 17. And it was three days before her 18th birthday. I was like, I've been fucking her for six months. I'm going to keep fucking her. And I did. I kept fucking her 
17 to she's about 22. And because I come on here and I speak my truth and I, you know, I don't sit here and make stuff up. Like a lot of these so-called dating gurus would never ever tell you they fucked the fat chick, even though they have. Because this is one of the things I have seen on Chatterbait and I've seen on YouPorn. There's a lot of fat chicks who are getting the dick. I'm like, who's fucking all these fat hoes? Somebody. Fat girls getting that dick. So, one of the things I've learned over and over and over, if you show up and you put in the correct amount of work in the correct venue, you get results. You get results. I went after women. I got women. I went after money, but not money directly. That's where most people mess up. Because if you go, if you go after the money directly, you're going to get frustrated. But if you provide service and ask yourself this question, who can I help? Who can I serve? Who can I help out? Who can I make their lives better? You go from that angle. It's a little different. And the money will be a byproduct of how many people that you help. So the more people you help, the more money you make. It's just that simple. I don't never go after money and never start a business for money. That's in one of the Art of Podcast episodes. Check it out. So you can live. And here's the thing. When you're 18, no one sits you down and tells you, hey, if you make this decision and you work this way, you can have the life of whatever you want. I got a question for y'all. I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to say a name and I want you to put in the comments the first thing that comes to mind. Charlie Sheen. Put in the comments the first thing that comes to mind. I'm running a social media, a social experiment here. So ask yourself. Do you want to live a life of design in the tent? Because it's possible. It's very possible. But you got to do the work. You got to do the work. You got to show up. You got to stand up. You got to show up and show out. Because I have literally spent hours working on ads. Hours writing ads. Rewriting headlines. Testing out headlines. Testing out the first paragraph, which was so important because the first paragraph was the thing to get them hooked. And when I started tapping into that female submission story, woo! I literally, literally was swimming in a sea of pussy. It was like, tell you a story. Moist men alert. Moist men alert. All the moist men leave the room was in these cob with one of these housewives who had answered my ad and we were sitting in my car and at the time I had an Audi S4 with limo tent windows we were sitting in my car we was talking and I started playing with her pussy housewife she had a huge diamond ring on about three carats I didn't care and I started kissing her, right? Playing with that pussy, and that pussy was wet. Then I just kind of got up the seat, slid my pants down, pulled my dick out. Grabbed her by the back of her head. Grabbed this housewife by the back of her head. This is the first time in life I've ever seen this woman. And put her mouth on my dick, and she opened her mouth, and she started to suck my black dick. This white housewife. First time I ever saw her. First time I ever met her. Because I wrote an ad that tapped into her female submission story. And she was moaning. She was moaning as she sucked my dick. Then I came in her mouth and I sent her on her way. About four days later, she was at my house. And let me tell you how she came to my house. She came to my house like I told her to come to my house. She had a dress on, no bra, no panties, high heels. And she came in my house and I made her get on her knees and start sucking my dick again. 
and I fucked the shit out of this housewife. Sorry. First two times. Suck my dick. And you guys, guys out here who are struggling to get a date. To get a date. You're struggling to find a girlfriend. And I had bitches sucking my dick on the first fucking meeting. This is why I'm so cocky. This is because I put down my shit. I put down my ism. I have done this countless times. Now, I no longer mess with housewives. There's just too many single women out there. And sometimes it can get a little dicey when you're messing around with a married woman. You can get a little dicey, little dicey. But that's my story. What is your story? Are you writing the story? Or are you just waking up every morning and breathing through the day? You're not trying to do anything. You're not trying to live a life of design and intent. You're just existing. You're just existing. And it doesn't have to be that way. You can start living a life of design and intent. You can start living a life of epic proportions if you wouldn't simply make the decision to do so. And then once again, the first part is making the decision. The second part is taking action. The third part is being consistent. And the fourth part is learning from your, your mistakes. Because there will be mistakes. When I was developing the Craigslist protocols, I had all kinds of mistakes. I had all kinds of shit happen. And I just worked it out, worked it out, kept writing ass, kept writing ass, kept showing up, kept showing up, kept showing up. And then one day I started to show out. Because when I figured out that female submission story, woo -woo, it was like I had found the magic key to all to unlimited pussy. Literally, whenever I those ads are so good that I can put them like match.com. Match.com gives you enough room to write an ad like that. I could put that bad boy on match.com and start getting results. And these ads are 15, 18 years old and they still perform. Moist men alert, moist men alert. Will all of the moist men please leave the room? Plenty of fish used to give you room to operate. I placed my best performing ad on plenty of fish. I placed it on a Monday morning. Tuesday evening, I had a girl around the way at my house sucking my dick. You can't find a date. <clears throat> you can't find a girl. You can't find a submissive girl. I literally had submissive women popping out my ass. There's plenty of them. But once again, you have to be masculine to activate the submissive feminine side of the woman. Because if you're just a straight up little bitch, you will not activate that. You will not get morning blowjobs. You will not get more a chick fucking the shit out of you, riding your dick, and she come and she's like, oh, and she gets chill bumps on her ass because she's coming so hard. You don't know about that life. You don't know about that life. And some of you like, I hate it when you tell the sex stories. So for all of you people who are like, this is going to stay on YouTube. It's going to stay on YouTube. But the Art of Profit podcast, this stuff will not be part of that. That's going to be straight business. Straight business. So you can go over there and get your fix. Because over here, we keep it 100%. We keep it real. We keep it rugged and we keep it raw. And some of y'all like it like that. Like, what was that quarterback? You like that? You like that? He used to play for Washington. Then he went to uh, Minnesota. Kurt, I think his name was Kurt. You like that? Because I'm going to keep speaking this. But this is, this is how you live a life of intent and design. It's about 
making a choice, taking action, being consistent, learning for your mistakes, and repeating the process over and over and over again. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. And more importantly, you need to understand what you want. You need to be so clear that if someone woke you up at two o'clock in the morning, it's like, what do you want? And you was like, I want this, 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 this. Because you're clear. The more clear that you get on what you want, the more likely it is to happen. I don't like tall women. I have not dated a tall woman in I don't know when. All the women you'll see me with, they're going to be 5'4 at the most. At the most. Because I like short women. I like women with long hair. I like feminine women. This is what I get because I know what I want. Moist men alert. Moist men alert. Will all the moist men please leave the room? I haven't masturbated in 16, 17 years. You want to know why? Because I can always find a submissive feminine woman to suck my dick for me to fuck in the pussy or me to fuck in the ass. Always. I don't even watch porn. Every now and then I'll come across something. But I don't consume porn. I don't go to strip clubs. You want to know why I don't go to strip clubs? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you find a submissive feminine woman and you say, baby, I want you to wear some high heels and I want you to twerk for me. Really? Let's go shopping and get you those heels. Okay. Then she go in the bedroom and she'll put on something and she'll come out. She'll be all awkward at first until you cheer her on. Go, baby. That's it. Shake that ass. Shake that ass. And before you know it, she'll be dancing just like a stripper for you. And she'll get turned on. So when you can have that, why in the hell would I go to a strip club to be teased by a woman that I can't touch, I can't fuck. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna give her a lot of money in the interim. That makes no sense to me. So I don't go to strip clubs, I don't watch porn, and I don't jack off. I want you to think about that. How many of you men can you say that, that you don't do none of this stuff? Because like porn to me is unrealistic. Porn is mostly orchestrated and fake. But I don't I don't jack off. I remember I was with this chick. And it had been two weeks since I had a release. And when I came in her mouth, she was like, oh, my God, that was so much. It's like it's been about two weeks. And she asked me a question. She said, you don't jack off? I said, no. And she said, why? I said, that's why I got hoes like you for. She said, I'm not a hoe. Do you know what I did? I, I, Because I was laying on my back. I rolled up on my side. Then I put her on her back. Then I slid my dick in that pussy. And I started choking her. And I said, you're my hoe. And she said, yes. Oh, yes. So say it. Say it. I'm your hoe. Say it loud. I'm your whore. Say it loud. I'm your whore. Then she came. A lot of you be speaking to these women with a lack of leadership and masculine qualities. And that's why you get the results you get. That's why you get the lip and the attitude. Because she don't respect you. That's that strong cocaine. I've literally called women sluts and whores. And when they try to buck up. I put them back in their place. And they say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then I slide my dick in that wet pussy and they come. 
because they're so turned on by the masculinity, which a lot of you are scared of. I scare some of you. And that's why you leave the little weak, feminine, moist comments in the comment section. Because I'd be scaring you because you don't understand the ism. When you get in the ism, everything is possible. Everything. And when I was like you, working a regular job, living a regular ass life, I didn't understand this. I didn't know it. Now, Tony Robbins has unleashed the power within one of his earlier works. And when you begin to live a life of intent and design, you start to release the power within. You start to go into God mode. Yes, God mode. 